This is the Church of St. Paul in the Desert. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. I guess the one thing I didn't mention in the bulletin that might have been helpful is we're using the scriptures today for Independence Day, which is on Wednesday, instead of the regular course. Bishop Catherine was gracious enough to authorize that. Um, and so I want to call your attention to these rather aspirational readings that we have from Deuteronomy, from the letter to the Hebrews, and from the gospel. And I want to also think about the very aspirational document, the Declaration of Independence. And as I've written in my article, uh, you know, it took a long time to get to the Constitution and everything else. But there is a phrase at the beginning of the, the preamble to the Constitution in order to create a more perfect union. Okay, the reason I bring it up is because in this gospel that we read today, um, where it says, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect, my experience is, is that when people hear that perfect, it's almost as like they begin shaking their heads and say, wow, I've already blown that. I, were any of you thinking, yeah, perfect, I, I can do that. Was anybody out there thinking that? Um, I want to talk a little bit about this aspirational aspect of our calling as Christians and link it, really, to these aspirations that we have as um, people who live in the United States. Um, the collect that we read today is a collect for the nation, and it, it lays out or it attends to some of the values that we aspire to as Americans. Um, the first aspiration is really in this, uh, in this gospel. The gospel, Jesus says, um, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. Uh, first thing, it was not said anywhere in the Bible, in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Christian scriptures, there is no place in the Bible where it says, love your friends and hate your enemies. There are lots of places in the Bible that talk about loving your, your friends. They also talk about loving folks who are in need. Talks about loving strangers or immigrants. There's all sorts of talk about who you should love, but there is no place where the people of Israel are told to hate enemies. It wouldn't surprise you that it's pretty common to, for people to think, you know, the way you go through life is you love your friends and you hate your enemies. Jesus is giving a commentary on that, and he's saying that's not the way to live. You should love your enemies, and you should pray for those who persecute you. The really important piece here is the why. Why is it that we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us? Because that's what God does. God sends rain on the just and the unjust. God loves the good and the evil. And that's challenging for us, and that's why I say this is an aspirational scripture, because it's calling us to aspire to something that is God-like behavior that I don't think is natural to us. It's very important to, to, to think about this that Perhaps it's because of that perfect at the end of this lesson, 
that people find it even more challenging than perhaps it should be. But what if at the end of the scripture, it said as some other translations use, be complete in your loving, just as God completely loves everyone. Now that would be a different message, wouldn't it? Because I think there are people who read the scripture as it's written right here and think that I need to make no mistakes and then I'll be like God who doesn't make mistakes. From, from what I understand, there is a certain word out there that the platypus is an example that God evidently does make mistakes. I'm not sure about that. I've never seen a platypus. But, uh, but the idea is it's not about perfection in kind of a modern American way of thinking about it. It's about completion. It's about fulfillment. Jesus, when he's on the cross, says, it is finished. Same language that's in this passage here. He's not saying everything's perfect. He's saying it's complete. It's done. His love of giving himself for the world has brought to fulfillment everything that was supposed to be. So when we are asked to love people who are enemies, perhaps, even persecutors, people who slander us, who hate us, we're asked to do it not because it's easy, not because it makes logical sense, but because it's God-like behavior that everyone who follows God is asked to emulate. We do it because God does it. Now, it's challenging because we need to learn it. We don't immediately, um, you know, after having heard a sermon on this, I don't believe anybody's going to be able to walk out and feel great about loving an enemy. But we need to start someplace practicing it so that we can gradually become those people whom we aspire to be, people who love as God loves. Now, the reason I connected this to that little passage at the preamble is that I think there's something to be said for this in relationship to us as a nation. The United States wasn't formed because it just made sense to have a country here. We were here and we were part of, of England. We were colonies. The reason the nation was formed was because our own, the people who lived here felt that they were under the thumb of a king. They felt they weren't able to be free as they hoped to be. They did not find justice happening for all of them. They felt it was something that was really um, only for somebody else. And so the idea of creating a country where all men, and that's, that's the language at the time, were created equal and where justice was to be applied equally, that was an aspirational um, value at that time. Because when you look back to the time of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, there was a rather small group of people whom that was meant to apply to. It did not mean to apply to absolutely everybody who was here when the Constitution was signed. But over time, our nation has grown in its ability to bring more people into this place of, uh, of equality and justice. And we still have a long way to go. But it's what we aspire to. As Americans, I think that at least I aspire to being a nation that has justice for all. As a Christian, I aspire to being someone who learns to love just like God loves. So I would invite you on this feast prior to Independence Day 
to aspire to the greatest values of what it is to be a Christian, to aspire to the greatest values of what it is or might be to be an American, and do the things now to practice, to prepare, to, that we might day by day become more the people we aspire to be and that our forebears aspired for us to be. Amen.